Hi, I'm Emma Ewing, and I've returned once again with the wonderful Carol Hodge, uh, but we are not talking about all things music today. No, 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 dear viewers and gentle listeners. Uh, we have something a little bit different and spooky. Um, our very special guest is a historian who you may know from TV's Most Haunted, owner of Derby Jail, hosts Ghost Walks Across Derby. Uh, he's also an author and has a series of podcasts and DVDs, such as The Ghost Tour of Great Britain. It's Richard Felix. Woo! Oh, hello. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Hi guys. <laughs> hello. Um, but before we talk about all things paranormal uh, today, um, you have a brand new book out uh, called Darby, The Crossroads of History. Uh, could you tell us about the book and what inspired you to write it? Oh, gosh. Well, you see, all this ghosty stuff and everything else. It, well, I mean, it, it, no, I've always I've always been frightened of ghosts since the age of four. <laughs> Uh, and I still am frightened of ghosts, but I had no particular interest in ghosts. I, I was chairman of Derby Tourism, God help me. Um, and um, basically, I spent the last 30, 35 years I, trying to promote the city of Derby, to be honest with you. Um, mm -hmm. And um, I, when, when I became chairman, um, I realised that we needed to find some of the fascinating and interesting things uh, of Derby's history, the juicy bits, as I call them, of, of history, which which fascinates people. And I spent all these years researching and, and um, coming up with the most incredible, incredible facts about about the city of Derby. And, and the, the fact that Derby is the most central city in Great Britain. For the last 2,000 years, people have passed through. Some, uh, some of them have stayed, some of them have gone on, and some of them have, for want of a word, had been dispatched back from whence they came. <laughs> and I ended up actually with, with with 54 superstars. I call them superstars that have had something to do with the city of Derby mm. uh, over its 2000 years history. And, and a lot of them, an awful lot of them. You know, even if you were sitting in the desert somewhere, uh, you, you, you may well have heard of that person who had something to do with Derby. Uh, and so the book, the book's called, well, it's called Super, The Superstars of Derby, The Crossroads of History. Um, and it, it, it blows you mind, but it, I suppose it only really blows your mind if you're from Derby, <laughs> to, to be honest with you. Or, and there's, for instance, there's 23 Derbys uh, in America, three mm. in Australia, one in South Africa, all named after, after mine, after Derby. So, you know, it, yeah. it's, and, and the history of the city um, which people refer to as local history, our history is actually of international importance. Um, and so, so what? So it, it's a, it's a fascinating, I shouldn't say I've written it, but it's a fascinating book full of fascinating stuff that, that people will find beyond belief, beyond belief, actually. Um, <laughs> really. I mean, you know, stuff like the guy, a guy that lived in Derby for 22 years was the guy that came up with evolution. Um, oh, wow. The birthplace of the Industrial Revolution was actually Derby's silk mill in 1717, when we created at Derby the first factory in the world, and so on and so on and so on. You know, it's, it's yeah, it's a good one. But then, of course, you see, <clears throat> at the same time, I've published, well, two other books as well, you know, while COVID was on. One, of course, is What, what is a Ghost? And the other one is The People's Ghost Stories, um, which are people, your, your ghost stories, Joe Public's account, and I, of course, I, I've changed the name. They're not stories; they're accounts. Mm. That's the difference. Um, and I, I actually put in the book, uh, in the preface, I said, "This book is all the proof you need that ghosts exist." Yes, um, I was going to say, uh, taking on from what you've just said about what is a ghost, from skeptics to believers, uh, from science to the unexplained. I know you get this question a lot, but what is a ghost? Exactly. And that's what the whole book's <laughs> about. <laughs> really, it, the, the reality, the reality behind ghosts, not, not yeah. the Scooby-Doo stuff, not your TV <laughs> stuff, <laughs> not your Hollywood stuff, not M.R. James, Edgar Allan Poe, Lord Halifax's ghost book. Uh, no, the reality behind ghosts. And when I say reality, it's a very difficult, hard thing to say when I actually end up saying to people there is absolutely no proof that ghosts exist because mm. <laughs> there isn't you know no matter all these accounts i've put in this book all the, all that i've come up with in, in my book about what is a ghost there is still no actual proof that, mm. that ghosts exist um all we've actually got are accounts from people 
but say they've seen, heard, sensed, felt, smelt something. Um, there is no scientific proof whatsoever that there is there is life after death. But the fascinating thing for me is you, you know you know what's that? Okay, so you you you're in you, you go to court. Uh, perhaps you sat there just just what, watching a court case, and there's a guy there that's been been um, accused of stealing. Oh, I, what, I don't know a jumper <laughs> from, from Marx and Spencer's. Yeah, okay. And and there's a witness comes in in the, in the witness box and swears by yeah you know, whatever Almighty God that nobody's ever seen ever. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. that he saw that guy steal that jumper. And he's believed. They believe him because he swears by his imaginary God that he saw that guy steal that jumper. Now, that, yeah, that, that guy's believed. And because of his witness statement, that guy's put in prison. Mm. Mm. Wow. Yes. But if, I, <laughs> if I was to tell you I saw a ghost at 20 past three on a Friday night in Derby Jail... Most people, even to this day, would still say, yeah, well, he's either making it up, overtired, drunk, mistaken. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. Here's, yeah. here's a question for you. So that this, um, um, what, one of the things that I always question is, if ghosts are real, why and there you know there's obviously the theory that it's the you know the stone tape type theory they're, they're attached to a certain specific location mm. why is it that those apparitions don't appear to large groups of people at the same time why is eyewitness testimony overwhelmingly just one person witnesses something yeah but basically because uh, it, it, you you can see me can't you yeah yep. of course you yes. can right you see my hand in front of me now yeah. A little way from me. Is the ghost there? Or is the ghost there? Exactly. Mm. In, in other words, I don't mean, oh, it's all in your mind. I do, in a way. But I, I, what I do mean, it's all in your perception. So, yeah. you're, so we've got two transistor radios. Do you remember transistor radios? I'm sure yes. some people do. <laughs> yeah. Two transistor radios, right? Um, frequent, it's all down to frequencies. And um, you, you remember years and years and years ago, we were, we were listening to, oh, here we go, Radio Luxembourg or whatever it happened to be. And all of a sudden, Radio 1 burst in for about three seconds because the frequencies change. You, you used to get a different radio channel sometimes, sometimes interrupt. Um, and I think that's the same thing that happens in your brain. Because up here, this, this piece of equipment in here <laughs> is receiver, recorder, transmitter, video player, still camera, satellite navigation system, memory source, the works, it's the lot. This is the best, not this one, but this, as you probably <laughs> realise already. <laughs> this, this, this one up here, <clears throat> this computer up here, is the best thing. You'll never create a computer as good as this. Yeah. And basically, gonna... it's a frequency thing. So you can both be, three of you, five of you can be stood there and only one of you may see it. Because for some reason, and I don't know what reason, the frequency in that person's mind changes and they receive an image. Mm. Isn't there a story to do with Dudley Castle up upon the battlements? People, There was a group of people that claimed to see what they thought was a guard or something. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. Oh, there, there There's are, a group of them that... There are groups of people that mm. see things. Um, but, I mean, th there's another one. There's a famous one in, in Versailles. Um, mm. Where some 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 ladies, I think I think two ladies, I think were walking de uh, in Versailles, and they all of a sudden both of them saw what they believed to be a group of of reenactors in uh, 18th century costumes, and the whole and the whole place changed for some reason, um, mm. and it looked like it did in 17 1740 or something like that, which which is a sort of time slip, which is another possibility. Uh, a big possibility, in fact, that that some of what we're seeing, for some reason, is a, is a, a break in a dimension, a break in a frequency, a time slip of some sort. Um, but again, I think so much of it, to be honest with you, is is what's going on up here. Mm. But I don't, I really don't mean, oh, it, it's all in your mind. I think it's in your perception. Like yeah. some people see, some people colourblind, yeah. and see see red as blue. Mm. Yeah. 
So there's yeah. so much more to it. <laughs> uh, yeah. But we're frightened of it, you see, because we don't understand it. Mm. Oh, and that's one of my many phrases. Don't what fear do you think, what you don't understand. What, what do you think people's fascin- fascination with the paranormal is? Like like you said, like the people that are frightened of it, but they love it. Other people no, they don't. Isn't it strange? <laughs> <laughs> I think the big one, to be quite honest with you, um, is as as religion, as uh, um, established religion, <laughs> call it what you will, is 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 on the decline, mm. we are still looking for an answer. We still want to believe there is life after death. We want to believe that we go on. And so, if for want of a better word, it's almost becoming a religion. Not necessarily spiritualism, um, but certainly the the paranormal. Um, people want to believe that that we do go on to something, and I, I'm convinced. I'm convinced that we do. I'm a huge yeah. skeptic, by the way, that believes an awful mm. lot of it. Well, sorry, it can all be explained <laughs> one day. One day. Yes. Yeah. But Just not that we yet. don't. We don't have the science or whatever to properly understand. No, the science it doesn't want yeah. to really know it. You see, that's that, that's one of the biggest problems. Um, it's all screwed. And of course, a part. Part of the problem uh, for science is the fact that there's so much Scooby-Doo out there. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. There's so much um, fakery out mm. there um, with Hollywood and TV um, that basically you know, the science just, just sort of, you know, washes their hands of it, I'm afraid, which is a shame because there is a scientific – there is – today's magic will be tomorrow's science – Mm. No doubt about that. Yeah, it's the Arthur C. So, Clarke quote, isn't it? Any sufficiently is it? advanced, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. True, and that yeah. kind of yeah. <laughs> there you are, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I read a statistic, a, a really good point the other day. Actually, um, you mentioned about technology and how you know it's so easy to fake things now. And it, I mean, it was if you look at spirit photography, you know that was you know however many years ago, and people still managed yeah. to do it then. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Something like a third of the world's, or it might even be almost half of the world's population has a smartphone capable of, yes. of, do, of recording video, of recording audio. So if that statistic is true, why aren't there millions and millions and millions of ghost videos that you know have been have been captured? Yeah. Like all this, yeah. all the the potential to capture evidence. Everybody's first instinct whenever they see anything unusual is to get their phone out and start filming. You no, think absolutely. That if they if ghosts were a common phenomena, there'd be tons of evidence, millions there's, of videos out there, and there's yeah. not. So there isn't because you see, <laughs> again, I, I'm not a believer in photographs of ghosts. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm I'm a believer in photographs of the results of what a ghost does, but I'm not a believer in a photograph of a ghost because back to what I was saying earlier about it being up here. Right. So you've got you've got five people in a room and only one person sees that ghost. How can you take a photograph of what four people can't see? But one person can, because basically that person is only viewing it through their receiver, not the camera's receiver. Mm -hmm. Uh, So unless excuse me. Unless, I mean, I, I forgive me because I again I'm the most untechnical person. Unless a camera has um, frequencies in it <laughs> that can be changed, like a a phone, like mm-hmm. a or a phone, well, or, or, or certainly a radio. You know, that, unless the camera has has the ability to change frequencies to be on the same frequency as the person that saw the ghost, then I don't see even if that person's got the camera in their hand. When they're sit, when they're viewing the ghost, it's it's actually in their perception, not the camera's perception. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, look, I'm, look, I'm, look. I'm coming up with new stuff here that I'm going to be using. <laughs> on my, really, one I love it. That I've actually it. never thought of before. <laughs> well, I was going to say, even when people film supposed UFOs, mm. uh, I think people will always say, "Well, that's fake," even if always. they have the chance to pick up a camera. There's always that side of people yeah. that will come in and be like, well, it's fake, even if someone's like, they've caught a poltergeist moving something. Well, it's a string. Mm. 
Yeah, so you see, I've got, most in, yeah, I've got the most incredible bit of footage. Um, I don't oh. know whether you've seen it on, it's on YouTube, amongst other things. I, I was doing a, um, a ghost stories for Halloween in Derby Gile, mm. uh, about quarter past 11, uh, coming up to the bewitching hour. Incredible. Wow. And I'd invited yeah. people that had been on the events of the day. I did three events that day. If they'd like to come along to Derby Jail or stay behind at Derby Jail, bar's open, plenty of spirits behind the bar. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to be doing a uh, ghost stories for Halloween around the fire. And I'm sat there by a table right by the fire with a glass of whiskey on the table. As the glass starts to slide, slide move itself very gently towards the edge of the table and throws itself off the table. And uh -huh. wow is the only word I can <laughs> use because I've, I'm the guy that ticks the normal boxes first. And after the incredible shock of it happening, um, someone was filming me, uh, oh, okay. luckily. And we also got it on CCTV as well. Uh, and... Um, First thing I did was was jumped up and obviously put my hand on the table to see because yeah I mean you, you've probably seen in the past you know glasses will slide on a bar if there's mm. beer spilt on the bar then the glass will slide along it the table's dry the next thing I do I start banging the table to see if the glass will will slide and move um, there's too much it doesn't of course um, it does but I'm having to bang the table and eventually it, it jerks towards the end and, and, and falls off there's two more glasses on the table at the time um, it's impossible it's impossible oh, but it happened and, and the other fascinating <laughs> bit about it is that the whiskey I, by the way the most annoying thing was I lost my whiskey um, oh sorry <laughs> yeah um, the other fascinating thing is that the whiskey does not move in the glass Mm. Oh, that's, that's creepy. It is. It's always it's, it's <laughs> as good as I'm, it's as good. It's it's almost as good as me seeing a ghost in Dowager. Almost, yeah. but not quite. Um, so yeah, that's the result of I, I don't know what it's unexplained basically. Mm. I was, and if you don't mind telling this story, uh, you have a, a great story about your dad's ghost in your car. Oh dear, yeah. Thought, that, could you if you, yeah, yeah, could you share it? <laughs> I, I think that whenever I tell people, because I say to people, I've heard a ghost, I've seen a ghost. And I've mm. travelled with a ghost. And oh. every time I say, so which one do you want to hear first? And every time, yeah. yeah. Basically, <laughs> I was, um, all I ever wanted to be was a soldier. Uh, mm. My dad was the same. We he, All we ever did is play soldiers. And dad was, anyway, I was commissioned uh, into the Worcestershire and Sherwood Foresters. I was a soldier. And I, I was at Royal Military Academy, Sandhurst. Um, and um, I also, I, we for, I forged a friendship with a guy called Dr. David Chandler famous historian, military historian, head of war studies at the Royal Military Academy of Sandhurst. And uh, both me and my dad would, um, got very friendly with him. And every year, one of my, well, it's a long, it's a long story, but it's a good story. One of my uh, many things, I, I raised £100,000 for a statue of Bonnie Prince Charlie in the centre of Derby, because he, he, he reached Derby and turned back. Um, and every year we have a battle I, I organised a, a parade and a battle with bagpipes and all that sort of And we used to borrow the uniforms, the red coat uniforms for the battle from, from David Chandler at, at Sandhurst. And every year, Dad and I used to go down um, to fetch the uniforms uh, a week before December when, when, when we had the parade. And we, we used to go down every year. And um, I went down in the December with Dad, uh, 1990. 1991 it was and uh, it was IRA times st st still and we pulled up outside the guard room you can't just go in obviously and the Gurkhas were, were on duty there guard duty and we were sat there I had to wait for David to come up and get us he's in Dad sat, was sat there and he says to me do you think they've got real bullets in the guns I said of course, of course they've got real bullets in the guns and they're on guard you know, what's the point of him Oh, go with it. So anyway, a bit of a joke, but you know. Uh, anyway, that was it. We picked up the uniforms. We had coffee with David. We had a bit of lunch with him, and then we came home and did the parade. And Dad died in the February following year, February nineteen ninety two. And I delayed taking the uniforms, but I don't know why. I haven't a clue why, but I delayed taking the uniforms. And David rang me in July um, to to see if I was bringing the uniforms back. 
or whether I was going to keep them till next Christmas. And um, he knew, knew Dad was dead, of course. I'd, I'd told him that and he, he, he would like to have come to the funeral, but he didn't. Anyway, so I said, I'll bring him back. So um, I loaded all the stuff in the car, all these red coat uniforms in the car. Uh, my wife said, I'll come with you. And I said, no, you're all right. I'll go on my own. Fine. My brother offered to come with me, uh, you know, just to sort of, I said, no, 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 I'm quite happy, call me on. So off I went, and I turned up at the guard room, and um, the Gurkhas were there again, just the same. And I'm sat there thinking about, obviously I had to wait for David to come and fetch me. I'm thinking about what Dad had said in, in the December, um, about the bullets and all that. And then he turned up, I signed in the guard room, and said, right, follow me, and it was about a quarter of a mile through through the camp to get to David's office. And we arrived at his office. He pulled up and, his, and I pulled up alongside him. He jumped out of his car and came over to me, beaming as usual. Richard, would you and your... And look, looked in the passenger seat. I said, sorry, Dad, sorry. He says, and he looked again and said, oh, so, I'm sorry, Richard. I, I thought Julia had come with you. <laughs> That's my wife. I said... Uh, no, it was only me. He says, uh, and scratching his head like, he says, I, I'm so strange. I said, I said what, what, what's strange, though? He said, well, obviously I kept you in my mirror, you know, coming through the camp. And there was a figure sitting in your passenger seat. Uh, I said, <laughs> and he, he did what he, everyone, you know, reality comes in. I mean, Julia's five foot and half an inch and blonde. My dad was 83 and very grey. Um mm. But David did what we all do. You know, reality kicks in here. And I said, no, it's only me. Oh, he says, that's so strange. And then his words were, goodness me, you don't think it was father, do you? I said, oh, I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, don't, I said, don't forget I'm trying to go. This is right. And I'll be, I have to be honest with you. When dad died, this is r ridiculous. I was frightened of seeing him mm. in the bedroom. Because my wife used to say, for God's sake, Richard, he weren't frightened of him when he was alive. Why would you be frightened of him when he's dead? But I, a few nights afterwards, I was quite quite nervous. Of, of, you know, that's how frightened I, I've always been a ghost, to be honest with you. It's nonsense. Why am I doing this? So I don't know. I don't know. Did I, did I conjure him up? Did I, I was thinking about him. Of course I was thinking about him. He used to come down with me every year. Or did, I, I mean, I couldn't. I couldn't create an image of him sitting oh. next to me. I didn't see him. Mm. I never felt him, sensed him or anything. Were you thinking but, about him? Could it have been like yes. an ac accidental tulpa that you created? Yes, I was thinking about because that's the whole point. I, yeah, when we arrived at the guard room, first thing, I'm, sa I'm sat there waiting, thinking, yeah, December, Dad was sat here, you know. Um, but I didn't see him. Yeah. But the, 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 the other thing yeah. is that I was so frightened of ghosts as a kid but actually, I had nightmares, and, and it was always Dad that used to come in to me. Uh, Mum didn't, didn't, didn't want to know at all. I mean, my Dad always used to come in to me uh, when I was having these nightmares. And, and he always told me there was no such thing as ghosts. And so I've got this feeling that, that Dad would never show himself to me because, because he knows I'm frightened of ghosts, you know, I, which I find really strange. It's a bizarre one. But Dr. David Chandler was a credible guy. You know what I mean? Mm. Not, 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 uh, be careful what you say, Rich, but not just anybody. He, he's a, you know, um, head of war studies, Royal Military Academy, Sanders, credible guy. In his late 70s, he was at the time. Not the sort of bloke that's going to come up with a, why on earth would he come up with a silly story mm. like that for me? And that's my take on all of this. Why on earth would that person make that up? Yeah. True, because they don't. Very well, some true. do. Some do. Of course, they do. Some do. <laughs> but uh, the vast majority don't, because it's real. As Carol herself has been on a ghost hunt, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, I was How just was thinking that. that. I, I went on my first ever ghost hunting event um, last Saturday. Oh, really? um, and I was very, very open minded. I didn't, I didn't yep, know yep, what yep. to expect, but I was like, I'm very open. I'll, I'll join in. I'm, you know, really hope that I experienced something. And um, my, my experience was uh, there was one woman in particular who was part of the, you know, the participants. She wasn't part of the organisation. 
No, no. And um, one of the first things we did is we we tried to you know connect with spirit, and the organisers were doing uh, little taps. You know, they were going, "Can you can you tap back to us?" Yep, yep, yep. yep. And I saw this woman who claimed to be a medium. I saw her tapping her foot several times in response to uh, what was happening. And she was claiming, oh, there's a ghost here next to me. And I can feel them. I can hear them. And we also did some table tipping. And when we did it without her, nothing happened. And then when she joined in, (laughs) and you can see a knuckle going white, the table, oh, oh, what a surprise, it's moving loads. And... um, so yeah, my experience was it, it's. I find it quite fascinating. Like you were saying about it being almost like a religion, Richard. I think there are some yes, people who, you know, she might have been grieving or you know in a lot of pain or you know want desperately wanting something to believe in, some sort of attention seeking yeah. behaviour. So it's but really fascinating. But to yeah. fake, but she faked it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I, I have had, I do have people that do that. I've had one or two that I've had to throw off people that have, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, and I can, I can never, in my wildest dreams, understand why someone that pays to come on an event would want to fake something. They would only, they, you, you only want something real. What, what, what? benefit would that lady have got from doing that i cannot imagine i just don't understand it and it happens of course it happens happens a lot yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah. the the only thing that i experienced on on that um at that event that i couldn't explain was the uh, the dowsing rods and i'd never oh, used them real. before but i was given copper dowsing rods and i was yeah. walking through a room and all of a sudden one of them just started sp- spinning like crazy and i was like oh you know i was really trying hard to hold them still yeah. and then they both pointed in the same direction i mean i know they're, su- they're supposed to find water sources aren't they so i don't know if it was related to that or like you yeah, said it could well be a, a change in atmospheric pressure but it's very yeah. unusual and when yeah. i tried to influence it i thought oh we're going to ask we're asking the spirit questions yeah. i was like okay i think they're going to say yes but the yes yeah hand didn't move at all i thought i might have been unconsciously influencing it but it didn't quite work out that way it was um yeah yeah it's absolutely genuine um we've doused for thousands of years uh yeah. looking for water precious metals oil we haven't looked not not we've, we haven't doused for thousands of years looking for oil because we didn't know about oil until about 1770 something like that but um we've we've doused uh, uri geller out doused for oil and made his millions with, wow. with a dousing crystal on a map. He didn't even go to the place. Um, and honestly, Seven Trent uh, River Authority and, and other river authorities, uh, their, their technicians, their engineers, use dousing rods all the time to mm. find broken water pipes. It's oh, real. <laughs> I've had two, two in the last year that have t- told me the same thing. Uh, Seven Trent don't like us doing it. They, they discourage it. But we do it because it's more efficient than the machinery we've got. Yeah, it actually works. Oh, yeah, it's genuine. Yeah, yeah it's fantastic. It's fascinating. Um, but elephants um, walk for hundreds of miles thinking thinking water, and then they suddenly stop, and they dig with the trunks, and they find water. Wow. It, 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 it's it's, it's like... incredible. <laughs> wow. Aborigines um, do it. They teach their children. Because this is going back, not quite so much now as they did, but when they were obviously in, in the bush, you know, in, out in the middle of wherever in, in, in Australia, um, um, and they teach their children to douse to find their way home. Because if they're, if they're off, say they've gone five miles to find water in the bush and, or something, and, and everywhere looks exactly the same, or the desert or something, um, they actually teach their children from a very early age to walk round and round and round in a circle, thinking, mum and dad, mum and dad. Mm. And they do this, and then they suddenly stop, and they walk in a certain direction, and they get home. Wow. It's the same as pigeons. <laughs> yes. <laughs> magnetite in the end of their beak. I don't know whether we've got magnetite in the end of our noses, but it's, it's the same thing. It's the same principle. Yeah. Um, was- Reality. Oh. Tom, I'm, I'm a great believer in energy. It, you know, it's proven that it, you know, it can't be destroyed. And you know, exactly. like when people have been arguing in a room, and you haven't heard the argument, 
you know, you've known nothing about it and you walk into a room, there's an atmosphere. The atmosphere, the atmosphere uh, is still there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I, that's my, I'm very open-minded about it. And I'm yeah. quite, I find the uh, stone tape theory, as Carol mentioned earlier, very plausible. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not necessarily an intelligent, but yeah. it's... My impression, yeah, like it's a recording. A, yeah, like a yeah. battlefield, you know, like uh, yeah. in Gettysburg, they, the residents claim to hear, um, oh. you know, the muskets it, and everything. It, it, there's a story the with the... Battlefield on the planet. Yeah. Um, I think there's a story with Buddy Holly as well, uh, the crash site where his plane crashed. Uh, residents that live near there still claim to hear a crash sound yeah. every year yeah. upon his sort of yeah. sound. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an absolute reality, and and I think that makes up approximately sixty percent of what we re- mm. mistakenly refer to as a ghost, because it's the image, okay. the image yes. of a dead person. Um, and and funnily enough, what you were saying about Gettysburg, it, it's the most haunted yeah. battlefield on the planet, yeah. and, and and it was it was one of the bloodiest, but it wasn't. It wasn't the bloodiest battlefield, but it it was a you know, very extensive mm-hmm. battle that went on for like sort of two two days continuous. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's over a thousand sightings of, of ghosts on the battlefield. Um, and a guy called Mark Nesbitt, who's one of the um, well, he's he's one of the ghost hunt guides, but also a ranger. Um, he's written nine books mm-hmm. just 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 on the battle the ghosts of of, of Gettysburg. And, and the fascinating bit is, really fascinating bit, I'm talking of energy and stone tape theory. Um, just, I won't go into detail, but basically it's all to do with rock, uh, sandstone, mm-hmm. limestone, granite. They're made of, of silica, uh, which is a, semi, a, a semiconductor um, and holds memory. Uh, silicon chips, you know, hold memory. Um, and if you add to that iron oxide, which is rust, which is magnetic, you've got the same, same um, ingredients as you have on a cassette tape. Or a mini a mini DV tape, or a or a reel to reel tape, um, and, and uh, who'd have thought a hundred years ago that you could actually get a piece of sticky acetate, silica tape, sticky, ring, string, sprinkled iron o- oxide particles, rust onto, and you could record on it because we do. That's a, that's a cassette, mm-hmm. a, a tape. So it's the same ingredients in the rock, uh, the br- the bricks. Red sandstone, especially, uh, and bricks, castles, stately homes. Anyway, back to Gettysburg. The fascinating bit about it, this is that the whole of the Gettysburg battlefield is on a red sandstone plateau. Oh, wow. Guess what? More recordings. Yeah. And, and going in America again, when, when we did Most Haunted over there, we went to a place called the Whaley House in San Diego, Old Town. It, it's the most haunted house in California. Yeah, okay. Guess what? It's the oldest brick-built building in California. Yeah. See where I'm coming from? Yeah. yeah. That's fascinating. <laughs> <Prim. laughs> no uh, yeah. We just want to say thank you, Richard Felix, for joining us and talking about all things paranormal, stone tape theory, and history. My pleasure. And fun. My pleasure. So, so thank you. And goodbye. <laughs> Thank you. See you guys. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> bye. Yes, bye-bye. <laughs> bye.